Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra, Tango, November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about WinLink email. And this is actually part two of our WinLink email series, where we're focusing on peer-to-peer -peer connections. Now, unlike our very first video in this series, we're not going to use the internet, we're not going to use any intermediate stations to transfer emails between ourselves and another station. So for this scenario, there are no intermediate stations, there is no internet. We have no other choice than to connect directly to the station we'd like to exchange messages with. This is called a peer-to-peer -peer connection. For this demonstration, we'll be connecting to Teme, Oscar Hotel 7 Tango. This is the second time Teme and I have had a peer-to-peer -peer connection solely for the purpose of learning and producing this video. So there really isn't that much to yap about now, so we're going to jump right into it. Stick with me, and we'll teach you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. For a peer-to-peer -peer connection to be successful, there's a few things we have to ensure before we can get started. The success or failure of our peer-to-peer -peer connection depends largely on our communications plan. Since we're trying to connect directly with a station, we need to know where that station is going to be, what time it's going to be there, and where we're going to find it if it's not where we expect it to be. This is going to be our communications plan. So we need to agree on the time. We need to agree on the right band for the time of day then we need to agree on the frequency. And in the event something goes wrong, we need to come up with an alternate band and frequency to ensure we have a backup plan to connect to that station. Tema and I have agreed to meet on 80 meters, dial frequency 3600 on upper sideband between 06 UTC and 08 UTC. Since we've got nothing else planned for the day, we're going to leave the radios on there until we transfer messages in both directions. For this peer-to-peer -peer connection, Tema and I will be using Vara HF, that's our WinLink mode. We chose that because it has an excellent balance of bandwidth and weak signal performance. Now once we know where we have to be, when we need to be there, and we've set up our radio for that scenario, we can go ahead and start composing our messages. Now in the perfect world, the messages would already have been composed and saved to our outbox, ready for that connection to take place. But for the sake of this video, we're doing it so you can see the workflow. Now I'm going to show you one thing, a mistake that I actually made when I posted this message to the outbox. Now, even though my messages were posted to the outbox, because of this simple mistake, my messages wouldn't be sent to Teme, even though we had a successful connection. So, when you're composing your message, before you save it to the outbox, make sure to change the message type to peer-to-peer -peer message. If we don't do this, our messages will be saved as a normal WinLink messages and won't be sent out until we actually connect to a gateway. So you've composed your messages, you've saved them as the right message type, and you've put them in the outbox. Now we can create a connection to connect to Teme Station. Now if you weren't bored already with the first three minutes of this video, you're probably going to get bored now, because this is basically uneventful. It's exactly like connecting to a gateway. Anyway, if we look at the connection window and the information displayed, we can see that it's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. So the two stations are going to make some negotiations. One will ask the other what he wants. Do you have anything for me? The other one will ask the same thing. And then they'll actually start transferring messages back and forth. Now, I'm not really sure how this is negotiated, but Teme Station is sending messages for me first. After his messages have arrived on my station, my station will send over the messages waiting for him back to his station. And please take note of that green status bar going from right to left across the screen. 
That's telling me that there are messages coming from Temes station to my own station. When my station is sending messages from my station over to Temes station, that green status bar will be heading left to right. Now, when we have exceptionally good conditions, we can get pretty good bandwidth and speed with VARA HF. In that case, you might miss the status bar going across the screen as your messages are sent out. Okay, let's pay attention here now. We're about to close the session, and you'll notice that I received two messages from Teme Station, but my station didn't actually send out any messages. Now, I left this mistake in here so that you could learn from my mistake. The message wasn't sent because I didn't save it as a peer-to-peer -peer WinLink message. So now what we need to do to fix these messages is open the outbox and open each individual message. Then resave that message as a peer-to-peer -peer WinLink message and save it to the outbox again. We repeat this for every message in the outbox that's a peer-to-peer -peer message for Teme. Now, once we've corrected Julian's silly mistake, we can go ahead and start a new session with Teme, and you'll notice those messages will be sent over correctly. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Now, again, this might be painfully boring, but there's a reason for it. There's actually quite a lot of QRM on the frequency Teme and I have chosen. Now, the messages will definitely get through, but we're going to lose a lot of performance simply because of the heavy QRM on the frequency. Now, the reason I'm asking you to suffer through this is because this VADA connection actually adapts, so to speak, to the QRM on the band. If this was a Winmore connection, we'd be totally shut down. We wouldn't be able to make that connection at all. An RDOP connection would be better than a Winmore connection, but it's still a lot slower than this VADA connection with the QRM. So while those messages are transferring, let's talk a bit about peer-to-peer -peer connections. Peer-to-peer -peer connections are extremely useful for grid-down scenarios where infrastructure or internet connections are down, where we don't have any intermediate stations to connect to to send our messages onward to another station. With peer-to-peer -peer connections, we alleviate all of the middlemen, so to speak, and we connect directly to that station we'd like to transfer messages with. Now, you might also notice the only thing I had to do was make that connection between uh, my station and Themes station, or vice versa. With the messages in the outbox already, there really is nothing to do. My station, provided WinLink is running and my radio is on, my station will automatically accept that connection from Deme and transfer those messages to him, and his station will transfer any messages he has over to my station. Now, WinLink peer-to-peer -peer connections are excellent resources for grid-down scenarios. Now, according to a communications plan, I can leave my station up and running, radio on, WinLink running, and allow other people in my group to connect to my station according to our comms plan to send and receive messages back to me. And naturally, like we've done with Teme here, I can also leave messages on my station for them to collect when they have an opportunity to do so. This is the asynchronous nature of WinLink. So not only do we have the possibility of collecting those messages when we can. An operator doesn't actually have to sit there at the station 24-7 waiting for a message to come in. Now there's another benefit to peer-to-peer -peer connections and that is removing all of the potential points of failure. So unlike choosing a random gateway to connect to, when you have practiced, when you know the station that you're trying to reach, that peer-to-peer -peer station you're trying to reach, you can practice beforehand, you can get your sea legs on and understanding how to connect to that station on what band, on what frequency, with what type of antenna configuration it takes to make a reliable connection to that station. Now, Teme is using a G5RV in a sort of dipole configuration. My own antenna is an NVIS antenna about three meters or three yards above the ground in horizontal configuration. 
Now, in the perfect world, both of us would have been using NVIS antenna configurations for reliable communications between us. But as you see, this worked incredibly well. Now, while these messages are finishing up, let's talk a little bit about the speed of this connection. Now, I was only running between 15 and 20 watts on the Zygu G90. If I were running 50 watts, for example, it would have been extremely easy to overcome the QRM and increase the bandwidth or speed of the connection. Now, normally I'm even running less power than this, 5 watts or 10 watts maximum. But I like to get into the habit of using less power than I actually need, even if it takes a little bit longer to transfer those messages. Now, we could certainly increase the transmit power to overcome the effects of the QRM. Now, rather than simply increasing the transmit power, which might actually be unsustainable in a grid down situation, I would rather look at things like adjusting the bandwidth of my filters using notch filters or even adjusting my antenna configuration to better optimize it for the station I'm trying to reach. Personally, I like getting in the habit of using low power whenever I can for emergency communications or communications for preparedness. Now, I honestly believe using lower power levels than 50 or 100 watts makes us better operators overall. Because we need to understand how to use our radios, we need to understand how to set up our antennas in the correct configuration, we need to understand how to use our filters, and more importantly, using the right mode for what we're attempting to do with our radios. The simple truth is, a 100 watt radio which pulls one amp of current on receive simply might be unsustainable in some sort of disaster or grid down scenario. Now, of course, if you're on a sailing yacht circumnavigating the world, of course you want to use 50 watts, 100 watts, as much power as you can when your life depends on it. But for many of us, 5 watts, 10 watts, 15 or 20 watts, that's definitely enough for effective data communications. So we're nearly done with this peer-to-peer -peer wind link session. Total time is about 12 minutes to transfer messages from Teme station and my station over to Teme. Now, admittedly, because of the QRM, this was the slowest peer-to-peer -peer connection I've had with Teme ever. Still, I think it was a good idea to show you worst case scenario so that you understand what to expect under the worst case scenario. All right, guys, I'm gonna fire off one more message to Teme. Send that off, get a response, and then there's something I want to show you before the end of this video. So for those of you interested in using a Raspberry Pi with your brand new ICOM IC705, take a look at the lower right hand corner of this video. Now many of us would like to use the ICOM IC705 with PAT WinLink on a Raspberry Pi. It's probably the most economical and most energy efficient method of WinLink communications we have available to us today. So in the next video in this series, we're going to be setting up the ICOM IC705 with PAT WinLink running on a Raspberry Pi. I promise you, this is going to be the easiest installation and setup you've ever seen for PAT WinLink and the ICOM IC705. Now, for those of you who are supporting my channel through Patreon or as a YouTube member, you've already seen this IC705 and Pat WinLink preview about a week ago. So a huge thanks to all of you who support the channel in whatever way you can. I honestly couldn't do it without you. All right, guys, please let me know what you think about this WinLink series so far in the comments. And as usual, the only thing I ask is that you be polite. All right, guys, rock and roll. Thank you for watching. Ciao.